If you have a Samsung phone, there's a good chance you're not using it to its full potential. I'm always amazed by how many people have a Samsung phone and use it every day, but have absolutely no idea about some of these amazing features. So in this video, I wanna share with you 30 of my favorite hidden features and some of my top tips as well that can bring your Samsung phone to the next level. And the best thing is, most of these tips work on just about any Samsung phone out there. But in this video, I'll be showcasing them on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So the first one is Samsung's Object Eraser. If you just open up the gallery and find any photo, say something in the background that you don't like, you wanna get rid of that, you can tap on the edit button on the bottom. On the bottom right, you can tap on the three dots and select Object Eraser, and then simply circle what you don't want and watch it completely disappear. This is impressive because Samsung barely mentioned it and it's basically the biggest feature the Pixel has been advertising. The second one on here is Samsung DeX. A lot of people didn't realize this, but most Samsung devices double as an entire desktop. So not just a phone, but if you plug this into a TV, a projector, a computer monitor, it unlocks an entire desktop experience. You can use a mouse, a keyboard, use a file explorer, drag and drop, do everything you normally would on a laptop, but it's powered by your phone, simply plugging in an HDMI through an adapter to your USB type C. Now, personally, I use this a lot for hotels. It's an easy way to get Netflix on the TV. You could use this for meetings if you wanna just bring a presentation and, and set it up with your phone. It's honestly super useful. But the next one on this list is actually extending screenshots. So many times, I'm sure you've done this, you've had a long web page, maybe an email or something, and you take a bunch of screenshots as you scroll down. Well, with this, you can actually take one screenshot, and then once it pops up on the bottom, tap on the bottom left, that little down arrow, and it'll keep scrolling down as much as you want to have one really long screenshot instead of taking many screenshots at different points on the page. The next three on this list allow us to really customize a lot on our phone, but they do require one app. So if you go into the Galaxy Store and you download what is called Good Lock, you'll be able to go in Good Lock and get something called Registar. So once you have those, you can go to Good Lock, open Registar, and you'll see there's a bunch of things here. The first one is actually choosing the side key press and hold. So it's your power button. If you press and hold it by default, it opens Bixby. Personally, I don't like using Bixby. Instead, I would much prefer to use Google Assistant. So I can turn this on and we can actually do a lot of things here. You can take a screenshot, you could access Google Assistant, that's what I'm going to do. Or you could turn on the flashlight, you could turn on auto rotate. There's a whole list of different things it can do, including open other apps. Maybe for example, if you want to open Snapchat or something like that. Now the next two are kind of bundled together, so I'm just counting it as one and this is double or triple tapping the back of your phone. Once again, within the Registar app here, if we say back tap action, we can choose double tap and we can choose this to maybe show notifications or show recent apps, or it could you know, start a pop-up window. And so if I just say access Google Assistant and I'm anywhere on my home screen, I can double tap the back and it'll open up Google Assistant just like that. Now, that is just one of the many things you can do with that. That's why I recommend getting that app. And honestly, there's another dozen that I could add from that. Next up, we have camera flash notifications. If you miss texts and calls all the time because you're in an environment where you need to have your phone silenced, maybe flash notifications are the right thing for you. So if you go into your Samsung settings, go down to accessibility, go to advanced, you can enable camera flash notifications. And that way, whenever you get a text or a call, it'll flash on the back. And so you can see that and you respond without distracting anybody else with loud noise. And then of course we have my absolute favorite when I'm traveling, a feature that I wish every other phone would copy, but so far nobody has done it like Samsung does it, and this is dual Bluetooth audio. So if you have two different pairs of earbuds or speakers connected to your phone, you can play audio on both of them simultaneously. So where would you use this? Maybe if you're on a plane and you are watching a movie and your, your spouse or your friend or whoever's next to you wants to watch that as well, instead of each having one earbud and then like you don't get active noise cancellation and you hear the plane in the other ear and the volume's cranked up, no, you don't have to do that. You can both have a pair of earbuds, both connect to this, it'll play simultaneously. You can both enjoy any media on here at the exact same time. Personally, that is a feature that always brings me back to Samsung phones and I really like having it. Next up, we have one-handed mode. Of course, it's no secret, Samsung makes some pretty gigantic phones, this one in particular. And if you have smaller hands, it could be really difficult to use this phone with just one hand, unless 
you use one-handed mode. All you have to do is swipe down from about a centimeter above the middle of the bottom of your phone, and that'll bring it into this mini phone mode within the giant display, it takes up maybe a third of your screen, and it's really easy to access with one hand. Personally, I don't really need to use that often, but it's a cool thing to have. Speaking of cool accessibility features, there's also the palm swipe screenshot, which means you don't have to worry about tapping both buttons at the same time. You can just swipe your hand across the screen as long as you're using the edge of your palm, and it'll take a screenshot for you. Now, if you have a Samsung laptop, a Galaxy Book, then this next feature is one that you can definitely use. And this is called multi-control. Apple made something similar. They call it universal control. And essentially, you can drag your mouse between your laptop and this phone, an easy way to share files or just move things around. It makes it feel like a more cohesive ecosystem, which reminds me, I'm actually working on a video. It's gonna come out really soon comparing the Apple and the Samsung ecosystems. If you wanna see that video, be sure to go down and click that subscribe button. I'm digging deep into the differences, the features, the similarities, and everything like that. I'm excited about the video, and I think you'll probably wanna see that as well. Moving on, even though large screens like this are kind of difficult to use with one hand, they're really great for multitasking. And if you wanna multitask, you can do a split screen on here, but there's a little bit more than that. So rather than just doing split screen, so let's just say I have Chrome opened and I have maybe Microsoft OneNote opened. If I swipe up from the bottom and I get to all of my apps there, I can tap and hold and I can go into a split screen mode. So if I go to split screen mode, that's great. But if you tap on the three dots in the middle, you can tap the little star and add that to your home screen. So you can make a split screen shortcut on your home screen so that if you wanna go, and it's like a common thing, you always wanna open up like uh, maybe Spotify and Maps, maybe Google Chrome and uh, OneNote, something like that. You can just tap that, it'll open them in split screen. It's super useful, especially for people who are looking for shortcuts to speed up and improve their productivity. So we're cruising right through these. This next one doesn't require any settings. It's one of my favorites, and it's the ability to double press the side button, the power button essentially, to open your camera. And this is great because if there's a quick instance when you wanna take a photo, it's the quickest and the easiest way to open your camera so you don't miss the shot. Maybe your kid did something great in a sporting event, maybe it's a nice sunset, Maybe you saw Bigfoot or aliens, whatever it is, you're not gonna miss that shot because you now know how to open your camera very quickly. So whenever you get that shot of aliens or Bigfoot, be sure to tag me. Speaking of camera, if you go into settings and you go down to shooting methods, you can actually enable the floating shutter, which means that you can move it around again with the concept of having a large screen here. Sometimes you wanna hold your phone in a different orientation and it's just easier to access the shutter if it's not all the way on the bottom. Maybe you want it in the middle or wherever, you can move it anywhere you want and have a second shutter, super useful to have. Speaking of the camera app, you can also use the camera app to scan documents. I'm always amazed by how many people have a Samsung phone, especially a newer one like this, and then they'll go and download a scanning app. Now, there are some benefits to having some scanning apps, I get it, but in general, this does a fantastic job, and I use it for almost all of my scanning that I need to do. You simply point your camera at any document, it'll outline it in yellow, and you can just tap scan, it'll scan it for you and save it. But besides photos and, and document scanning, your camera is also very useful for something called Google Lens. So from your home screen, you probably have a search bar from Google. If you tap on the camera on the right side, it'll open up Google Lens, you can take a photo of anything, maybe a bug or a tree, and it'll identify what it is for you. I personally use that in the garden. If there's some kind of disease on a plant, you could take a photo. It'll do a great job of leading you in the right direction or maybe translate. You could do another thing. You could translate from another language. Uh, for example, I went to Japan a couple weeks ago and uh, I could not read the menus. I don't speak Japanese, but using my phone, I was able to translate that and it was super easy to read the menus in English, but ordering, was still pretty difficult. <laughs> Next up, we have the ability to protect files, photos, documents, whatever, with a secure folder. So if you scanned a document and it's some kind of sensitive information, or if you took photos that, I mean, I don't judge, if you don't want people to see them, you can move it to a secure folder. Now, the secure folder is a great way to keep it as a, a essentially password protected folder that other people who maybe you hand your phone while you're driving, they won't be able to see that. Next up, we have the ability to privately share for secure file sharing. Again, if you wanna send things and you want to make sure that you know they're shared 
safely and securely, you can use this feature. Getting back to the Samsung Photos app, you also have the ability to create a GIF. It's essentially like a little moving photo, little tiny short video. You've seen them on your keyboard, sending them whatever. Um, but you can do this very easily by selecting in, so if you just go into your gallery and then you choose the photo, you tap select, and then you can say create, and you can create that. Now there's other things you can create as well if you wanna make like a little highlight reel or something like that. But personally, I found that creating GIFs is the most useful. We also have the ability to use Bixby. Now, hear me out on this one, I know, use Bixby. Some people don't use Bixby at all, but you can use Bixby routines to automate things. So you can tell your phone, when I get to a certain location, I want this to happen, I want my smart home to do stuff. Besides Bixby routines, you can also automate your phone settings using custom focus modes. So if you go into focus modes on your phone, so you can simply swipe down and go to, uh, right now my work one is on. And with this, you can enable, you can customize volume, you can customize wallpaper, power saving modes, you can disable apps, and you can do all of this based on time of day or based on location, and you can tell it also to exclude federal holidays and things like that so that, for example, if you go to work every day and you want your phone to definitely be muted when you get there, then you can have that so that when you arrive at work, it'll notice that you're in that location, it'll silence your phone across the board, and you don't have any kind of embarrassing notifications when you're in a meeting. Now, speaking of work and home life, you can also set up dual messenger. This is something that, again, is pretty specific to Samsung phones. Most other phones don't do this. And so if you have two WhatsApps or, or Facebook or whatever, you can have dual messenger, which allows you to message from the same app with two different accounts. It allows you to essentially download a duplicate of that app. To enable that, super easy, you just go to settings and you can just search for dual messenger, enable that and choose which apps you want that to apply to. Kind of going along with the notifications idea I mentioned with the flashlight, we have custom edge lighting. So the edge lighting is going to be kind of a ring of light around your phone when you get a notification. And so with this, if we simply go into our settings and search for edge lighting, you can customize this to be different colors, different styles, different animations. And it's just a fun way to get notifications on your phone. Samsung's always been really big on productivity. And one of the big things I like having on here is actually edge panels. So on the right side, most people don't even notice it's there. There's a tiny little translucent bar and you can tap and slide it up and down. Um, right now, mine's right next to my volume rocker and I can swipe over from the right side and it brings up this panel of different apps. But if you actually go into settings and you search for edge panels or just type in edge, you'll see edge panels pop up. And if you tap on panels, you can choose what these are. So they don't have to just be apps, even though you can customize the apps, of course. You can have things like Smart Select, a great way to take screenshots of different parts of your screen. You can have the weather. You can have tools like a compass or uh, a ruler, for example. You can have reminders. You can have a clipboard. So it can really do a lot that kind of brings your phone to the next level. Now, if you've ever swiped away a notification that you really wish you saw, you can actually go into notification history and see things that maybe you accidentally got rid of. So if you go just into settings again and you can search for notification history, you can simply tap on that. You can tap on notification history and make sure that is enabled. That way you'll be able to see all your notifications even after you get rid of them. Next up, if you're using Samsung's keyboard and you just type stuff and you really wish you could undo it, you can very simply swipe from the left to the right. So you can go down to swipe, touch and feedback, then tap on keyboard swipe controls and then go down to cursor control and this way, when you go to your keyboard, if you want to undo something, you can swipe from the right to the left. So if I just type stuff, I can swipe from the right to the left, it'll undo that. And another cool thing is you can actually tap and hold your space bar to relocate the cursor within the text. So it's kind of the next one on my list is tapping and holding and you can slide it left and right. So you can delete a specific letter without like tapping and trying to get it exactly on the right spot. Going back to our settings, if we go to accessibility and then go to advanced, you can actually choose what you want when you swipe up with two fingers. So for me, I can set that to mute all. It's a great way to silence everything on my phone. Again, if you're going into a meeting. Next up, we have the digital well-being on our phone. So if you just go into settings, you can go down to what Samsung calls digital well-being. And it actually really came a long way in the past couple of years. No longer does it just tell you your time that you were on your phone in the day. We can actually see a lot more than that. Like driving monitor tells you how much you used your phone while you were driving. I hope you're not using your phone while you're driving, but it'll remind you if you are, you'll see it right there. You can also see a volume monitor, a great way to make sure that you're not damaging your hearing. And all of that is in digital well-being, a feature that a lot of people might not even know even exists there. 
This next one has been blowing the minds of iPhone users for years because Samsung has really for a while been able to have video wallpapers, which personally I've always really liked. But in more than just a video wallpaper, you can actually select a gallery of video wallpapers so that every time you wake your phone, you have a different video wallpaper. So all you have to do is go to your wallpaper. So if you just tap and hold on the home screen, we can tap on wallpaper and style. We can tap on change wallpaper. We can tap on gallery. And then all you have to do is go down and select the videos you want. You can choose up to 15 different videos. And you generally, you generally want them to be shorter videos, like maybe 10 or 15 seconds would be ideal. And your phone will cycle through those different videos every time you wake your phone. And now last but not least, when you're setting up your phone, I hope you're using widgets. There's a lot of really cool ones you can add on here. But did you know you can actually create a stack of widgets? So if I tap and hold on my home screen, I can tap on widgets and let's just say I want to add maybe a widget for my battery. So if I add this four by two battery status one, and then if you tap and hold on the widget, you can go and tap on create stack. Now, once you create a stack, you can have as you know multiple different widgets on here and you can just swipe up and cycle through them. So you can have one for the weather, you can have one for your stock portfolio. And it's a great way to save space on your home screen by having one stack of widgets. So that's it. Those are my top 30 tips, tricks, features on the Galaxy phones. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. And of course, leave a comment below letting me know which features I didn't mention that you really like using on your Samsung phone. So I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.